Hello, everybody. I'm Angie Peacock. I'm a psychiatric drug withdrawal consultant and healing coach. Today, we are speaking with Ta Paul Tijerina. He's a functional nutritional therapist, a primal health coach, and a master health coach. I'm going to read you his bio. It's pretty impressive. Uh, Paul is a West Point grad and a U.S. Army veteran. And after getting out of the military in 2002, he hit his worst health at 275 pounds. He had high blood pressure. He was pre-diabetic, major digestive issues, and extremely inflamed. After going vegan for two years and seeing minimal improvements and additional problems, he found what he calls ancestral health, and he has never looked back. For over 10 years, he's been coaching people on animal-based nutrition, and such ancestral-based health, self-reliance, simplified living, among many other things. His dream for his clients is to, for them to experience freedom and happiness that comes from being healthy, being prepared, and simplifying life. His clients experience fat loss, improved performance, increased energy, improved hormonal profile, stronger digestion, better mental and emotional health. If you want to look, feel, and perform your best and rediscover the way you were truly meant to live, according to him, you have to focus on these things. You can follow him at, I'll put it in the comments, <laughs> it's a link tree link, but just look up his name, Paul Tijerina. It's in the title of this um, talk. Yeah, we'll share everything. Yeah. So welcome, Paul. Say a few What's words. What's up? <laughs> well, first of all, that was an amazing bio. Where did you get that? You did really good. You wrote it well, really well. <laughs> good job. Uh, but this is what I want to do today. Okay, so everybody knows Paul is my personal health coach. We met because the guy who created my website knows both of us separately. We're like a mutual friend. And thank you, Shane. Shane Dieter, Dieter Designs. Yep. Anyway, so Shane sends me a text and says, "I want you to meet my friend. Do you care if I connect you?" I was like, "No." We hit it off immediately. Paul was mm -hmm. like the nicest guy. I, I was in Mexico at the time and I was like, this guy is so nice. What the hell is going on here? The universe always brings me what I need, you know? So long story short, I hired him to be my health coach, even though he's kind of like my friend now, but uh, he's also getting into RVs. So he's going to be on the road soon, just like I am working from the yeah. road. So we had so much in common, right? That was such a good synchronicity because I, I, you know, I've been planning that kind of off grid deal for a while. And then we get into talking. and I'm like, oh my God, you're doing exactly what I want to do. I know. So, so I'm going to come at this from like health for the people that I work with, but also right. like my own personal journey and what it's like to be coached by someone else. And like, I know how hard it is to change things. So, and I'm doing it right now and I'm reminded how hard it is to really change like patterns that you have. So let's talk about, just start from the top, Paul, can you share with our people? Like, how did you get on this journey? Um, how did you get into all this stuff? Doing what I'm your, doing, yeah. Your personal well, story. Like uh, like I asked you, do you want the five minute, the 15 minute, or the 30 minute version? Let's do like the three minute version. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, well, you know, as a profession, I got into this, like I think a lot of practitioners do, which is I was extremely unhealthy and I wanted to fix my own problems. And then in that process, figuring things out, I like, I wanted to share it with other people, you know, so I burned all my bridges with the other things that I was doing at the time and just said, I'm going to make this work no matter what. But uh, do you mind if I just share a little bit about this uh, thing that I kind of pieced together in my mind? As Please I was do. About today, but so, also okay. like, but also yeah. like, like your own personal health journey. That's, like how do you, yeah, yeah. 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 okay, yeah. I, yeah. I, I was tying okay. it together in my mind. So um, I remember when I was a kid, like I was super happy. I'm talking about like when I was, you know, three, four, five, six, something like that. And I had hair back then, you know, but um but when I was a kid, I was extremely happy, carefree, wore mixed max clothes, raised my hand in school all the time, just didn't care, you know. Um, my parents divorced when I was in uh, about fourth grade, and then I moved with my mother to Mississippi. So she became a single parent mother. You know, we had to take care of ourselves and feed ourselves and, and do all that stuff. And I just remember that transition. I was very unhappy. I got involved with the wrong kids. I started caring more about the way I looked and how I dressed and all this other junk. Um, than anything else. And I just remember just being uh, kind of miserable and tired, sleeping through school all the time. Um, so uh, fast forward a little bit, I graduate high school. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And so I enlisted in the military because I'm like, what else am I going to do? I'm not going to waste money on college. And I got into the military and then I got bit by the kind of the health bug. You know, I was reading muscle and fitness and flex and uh, men's health and just trying to uh, I just used being healthy to occupy my time because I was alone so much, you know, I was just a very solitary guy. And, you know, in the military, you're moving around, you're meeting new people all the time. And it's like, you don't have a, a consistent core group of friends like you would if you stayed somewhere for an extended period of time. So, so I was trying to do all the right things. And then 
fast forward past that, I get out of the military. I still don't know what I want to do. I was relatively just not very happy in general. I went in for my first checkup since being out of the military, and that was in my mid-30s. And I was devastated because the doctor said, first of all, he couldn't believe I wasn't having a heart attack right there in front of him. My blood pressure was so freaking high. I was 270 pounds and um, just had a list of different things that I got diagnosed with. And I was devastated because I thought I was doing everything right. And I didn't notice this damage that had happened to me. It was very slow, but cumulative over time. And this is the story that I see with a lot of my clients. Like, it's like, you just, you kind of don't notice that it happens until you do, do notice that you're somewhere you don't want to be. Yeah. And, and that's when I had this realization that, um, you know, maybe some of what I think is healthy is not healthy. And, and that opened the door for me to learn some new things. And I had some realizations throughout this entire journey. Um, I developed this experimental mindset and I sought the help uh, or help of other professionals to help me learn faster than I would if I did it on my own. And, and what I learned was that like everybody's looking for the same thing. Even like when, when I talk to you and I work with you, right? Um, most people want to feel better. They want to be happy in their body and comfortable and confident in the way they look and the way they feel they're perceived by other people. Um, and they want to know that what they're doing is the right thing for their health over the long term. Yeah. Um, I think most people are, and this was including myself, are confused or at least uncertain about what they need to do to be healthy. They, they have a lot of it put together, but there's some missing links. So there's this kind of background uncertainty. And so people are looking for confidence. Um, they're looking for something they can do for a lifetime that makes sense. And, um, and that implies it's got to be simple and it's got to resonate with you, you know? So yeah. as I look back over my childhood <clears throat> and that whole story I just went through, I was like, why was I so happy here? And then not happy here. Now I'm the healthiest and happiest and strongest I've ever been in my life. I'm better than I was in my twenties. And when I piece it together, it was the health piece. Like when I was a little kid, my parents were together and we didn't eat cereal. Like we didn't eat processed food. We weren't allowed to. My dad just always had cheese and eggs and vegetables and fruit and, and meat. So we were healthy, but we didn't know we were healthy, right? When I moved in with my mother and we had to take care of ourselves, we ate macaroni and cheese and pop tarts and donuts for breakfast. And we just didn't have a concept of what was healthy and what wasn't healthy. Yeah. And then as I progressed into being an adult and trying to figure this stuff out on my own, I was following the mainstream narrative. You know, I was doing all the things I was doing low fat, egg whites, you know, avoiding red meat, eating every two or three hours, protein shakes and protein bars. And it's just that when I found the truth, I realized that health is one of the keys to happiness. And when you, when you find health, you find yourself and it may not change everything about your life, but just imagine showing up to life a better version of yourself regardless of what your life situation is like you can't help but have a better I love life that. i love that and, and and that's that was that big realization i had is that health has to be foundational for anyone and everyone because when you get better health and all the things i mentioned before it's like how can you not show up to life better period and then maybe it opens the door to find a passion or realize you're not happy where you are something along those lines i think we talked about that yesterday you know like people just mm -hmm. having this realization that um, you know, maybe I'm not happy with where I'm at. That's a good thing. And then you need to do something about it. But again, I think the pre precursor prerequisite is health or it needs to be a big part of it. That's it. And the reason that's so important to me is let me t talk about our audience really quick. So a lot of us are in psychiatric drug withdrawal. Um, we are not able to do anything. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, my first year I was eating kind bars, smoothies from Trader Joe's out of a, you know, container, a lot of convenience uh, orange, things for convenience, oranges, right? Because I was so sick, I could there was I couldn't even follow a recipe. I was so cognitively damaged, you know. Oh, yeah. So I yeah. want to just give that disclaimer to everybody in the audience. Like we're talking about regaining your health, like after you get to a certain point where you can do some of these things. So I don't want anybody like get upset or take it personal because like I am on just my own personal journey. It's taken me, you know, I'm almost I'm seven years off now. Like I'm I'm pretty healthy, but I'm still there's more. So my point is like I, I say this is like a this is a lifelong thing, you know, and I'm not just interested in coming off psych drugs. I want to be healthy and live a damn good life, period. I deserve yeah, it. Absolutely. I have suffered enough and I'm not going to stand for just mediocre health, like just average. I don't, that is, that is not where I'm coming from. I know that sounds like intimidating and hard, but me and you talked about this. I was like, it's hard being uncomfortable in my body. It's hard not being it's harder it's, it's harder, harder than yeah. trying to put the effort in to figure out these health things and and if i hear you right i understand every, everyone's going to meet this where they can 
I think a, a big theme of our message should always be simplicity and starting where you can. Like, so you learn from some people like myself or, mm-hmm. or, or you, and it's like, okay, you got all these things you could do, but then you need to boil it down to what it is that I can do, or I'm willing to do, or that I think is going to make a difference, you know? Yeah. Or so, like I can so, do now. And then later yeah. I'll do these other, you know, it's kind of snowballs. Talk about that really quick. Like let, let's bring my journey in. Okay. So right now me and Paul, I'm focusing on just my morning routine. So for instance, I work with you guys in the audience all day and it's really hard work and it's, it's a lot of suffering and it's a lot of uh, compassion that I have to have. I have to have a lot of empathy. I have to be in my body and be present. And I can't do that when I'm like disorganized and I had a hectic morning and I slept like crap and I didn't eat good. Like I cannot function. Like I just yeah. can't. So my morning routine is from six 30 to seven. I wake up, take the dog out, go to the bathroom, make my coffee or decaf. From 7 to 7.30, I do quiet time. So I journal, guided meditation, breathing, gratitude, anything like that. Then um, 7.30 to 8, I get ready for a workout. Either I drive to the gym or I set up equipment. From 8 to 9, I do a workout of any kind. It can be walking or yoga or stretching or CrossFit, like whatever I can do. 8, or sorry, 9 to 9.30 is uh, prep for breakfast. And then 9.30 to 10 is prep for work. And then 10 to 3, I work. So well, I, so that's, can it's I, only been a week and a half and it's already, yeah. I'm already feeling changes. Go ahead. Well, can I, can I f- say a few things about that though? Yes. So that sounds like a lot, right? But let's put it into context because, um, you know, we want to keep this idea of simplicity and elegance and making this work in my lifestyle um, relevant, right? So first of all, it, it's really about, it's not about like doing everything that you can all at once. No. It's about being consistent with something, even if it's something small and doing that relatively most days, if not every day, and then you start to see a benefit and then you want to do a little bit something more or add to it. Right. So, so a lot of our health habits don't seem to make much of a difference until they do, but that usually that takes a little bit of time. But what we did with you is even though that may sound like a lot for a morning for most people, you know, uh, the, the Angie that I first met was like, okay, I'm ready to do this. Let's overhaul everything. Let's get the food figured out. Let's get the fitness figured out. Let's, it's like, let's do it all. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what I call the perfectionist mindset. And, and what oh. we have to be careful with that is, is, is that number one, you're all in on everything until you can't do that anymore. And then you throw your hands up and you're pissed off because you can't make it work. Right. So the pendulum swings in the other direction. And so what did we do? We sat down, we said, okay, so what's, what's the most important thing that we can work on together? And you said it, you're like my morning, if I get my morning, right, then the rest of my day goes really, really well. So, so that's where that was born of what you just went through was us piecing together. What does a good morning look like to you? Mm -hmm. Because once you get that good morning for you, and that was important to you and everybody's going to be different about where they start with their health stuff. um, For you, that gave you the momentum to have a better day and to be your best self during the rest of the day. And chances are you're going to make better decisions with the other things that we're not even working on yet because you had that good morning and it set yourself up for success, you know? Yep. So I, I think the takeaway there is that, um, again, we're trying to say here, start small, start simple, um, start with things that you know that you can do. Don't overwhelm yourself with all the things that you could do, figure out what it is that you want to do and can do, and that's going to make an impact. And then once you start to see results from that, you can start to add to it or something like that. Yeah. And I think like, especially I'm thinking of my audience, like it's just one thing, just one, like mine is it could be you know, just one thing, just one, like I'm just going to eat less bread or, you know, I don't know. T- tell me like, what are some just one things that people could do if they're just starting this out? Well, it's, it's going to be different for everybody. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that that's where you have to just ask you, I think a really good place to start is to figure out what your what your ideal version of yourself is, you know, something that's um, achievable, you know, like, how do I want to look, feel and perform? How do I know that I can be? And then that kind of, because remember, we did that in our first meeting, we connected with your vision for yourself, right? And you were sitting there listing out all these different things that you want to see change. And then we talked about like, so why is it you want to see those things change? And that took a little bit of brainstorm. Mm -hmm. But but your reason behind it, your why behind it was because you want to be a better leader. You want to be better for the people that you serve. You want to be better and more comfortable and confident when you get on stage and, and when you work with people. And so, you know, just figuring that part of it out, I think, um, gives you a lot of good leverage to make yeah. some, some difficult decisions when it comes to what you need to do for your health. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, you can say, okay, so now that I know what it is that I want, and I know where I want to go, 
what are some things that I can do now to move me in that direction? It doesn't have to be everything. It just mm -hmm. has to be something. And that's yeah. going to be different for everyone. So it just depends on, um, you know, what's most important to you and what you want to work on. Some people, you know, when they come to me for health coaching, they don't want to work on the nutrition, even though I think that may be one of the most powerful things they could do, right? They want to work on their sleep. So we'll start with the sleep, you know, but um, I mean, we could talk about easy things to do in each one of those different areas, but in general, I think a good process is exactly what you and I did, which is connecting with what it is that you want for yourself and your health and then why you want to do that. And then thinking, okay, so I know that this is where I want to go. Mm -hmm. What do I need to be doing right now? to get me to that point. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to segue into you. You, you know, I'm super defiant and I'm like, don't tell me what to oh, do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. there's multiple reasons for that. But one of the reasons is I was in the army and it's a very restrictive environment. You know, you have to do exercise every day, whether you want to or not. And it's terrible exercise and it doesn't feel good at all. So then I was like defiant against exercise. Like, I don't want to do this crap. Don't tell me what to do. Then just my treatment in the mental health system I'm a skeptic of everything. I'm very mm -hmm. cynical. I'm like, this is all BS. I don't want to hear it. I don't yeah. want to do it. Then when you're in healing, like you're so you're living in such a restrictive, you know, you can't go out and see your friends. You can't have conversations. You can't cry. Like you can't eat certain things because it makes you feel worse. Um, you can't drink caffeine. You can't take medications. You can't go to trust doctors. Like all these things happen. So then when you start to get a little freedom and you feel like, okay, I'm healing to such an extent from withdrawal. And now like I'm getting my life back. So for instance, I went, I dove straight into caffeine because I haven't had caffeine mm -hmm. in eight years. And I just, I drink it twice a day and 64 ounces a day. And I just went over the, over the moon with it, you know? So I've gone through periods in my own healing process where like, I'm, I'm like, I don't want anybody to tell me what's wrong with me. I don't want to have to do anything, any practices. I don't you want, even to want yourself telling you what to do. That's, no, that's your other want... version of yourself showing up, but yeah. Yeah. Cause but, I, cause I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I don't want to do it. You know what I yeah, mean? So talk yeah, about yeah. mistrust, defiance, you know, being well, skeptic, being an advocate for yourself, all these things. We, we, well, yeah. I mean, let's just use, use the example, right? That was one of the, I think it was our first session, right? We sat down, we said, okay, so now that we have a, a tentative game plan, you know, this little, this morning piece, which, which uh, may have sounded complicated, but when we put together it's super simple, right? I was like, so, so what are the things that would keep you from doing this? And you brought it up. You said, define Angie, you know, I just got this freak. So everything that you just said, um, I empathize with all that, right? It's like, you can't, you have to have some self-compassion for being so defiant mm -hmm. because in a lot of ways, you and these people that you've worked with and the people that are resonating with this message, you've been betrayed by the establishment. Yeah. And you can take that bigger picture and, and realize that almost everyone in this modern world has been betrayed by the establishment in some way. Yours specifically has to be or is in the uh, psychiatric realm and, and uh, antidepressants and, and pharmaceuticals and things. But all of us have been uh, betrayed by the food system, uh, the money system. Like, so there's a, a hint of that with everybody. Right. Yeah. But I think we were talking about yesterday, first of all, acknowledging that gives you some self-compassion. This is why I am defiant. This is why I am rebellious because I've been mistreated and now I'm very cautious. Now I'm very skeptic. And we were also talking yesterday about how we can see that as a good thing because yes. you need to be your own advocate. You need to be skeptical. You need to scrutinize. You need to ask questions yeah. and you need to learn how to do that, but you just can't let that derail you from actually putting into practice the things that really matter, right? You have to notice, you know, like we talked about, notice Defiant Angie coming in, realize, hey, this Defiant Angie has served me in some ways, and it's still going to serve me because it makes me skeptical. It makes me ask questions. It makes me scrutinize things. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I have to notice it to the degree that I, I don't let it interfere with, okay, well, I need to do the work now. I need to put this stuff into practice. So there's, there's like a big self-compassion piece that comes into that, but then also mm -hmm. this awareness seeing that resistance and, and realizing I can't let that keep me from doing what it is that I need to do. Right. And, and for my clients, it's, you know, it's, it's an adapt, it's a trauma response to what we've been through, but it's also Absolutely. adaptive and that it keeps you safe when you're like cautious of doctors or cautious of what you put in your body. You know, it, this, this whole experience for me has turned me into the best researcher there is. Like I have researched everything I've listened to. I call this suffering. Well, like you're going to suffer and withdraw, but like mm -hmm. what you do with that time, I love that what you do with that time can lay a foundation for health later. So like Absolutely, yeah. my first year, I couldn't eat nothing but crap. Okay. That's fine. My second year I went into, I did Kelly Brogan protocol. I did all these like, you know, really strict restrictive 
things. And then I, I tried veganism. I tried um, keto. I did keto for 18 months. You know, this whole seven years that I've been healing, I have tried other things. I've dove deep into these subjects and I learned mm-hmm. so much about nutrition and health trying to heal myself. Yeah. So it's like, what yeah. did I do with that time was not a waste. When I was laying in bed, scared I was going to die because I was so dysregulated from the medication I came off. Um, I did something with that, you know? So I think it's, yeah. it's a pause. It was a pause on my life to say like, what's important. What do you want from life going forward? How are you going to live the best life you can after this experience? Um, so 100%. it's like, it's like using um, your, your trauma and, and this experience that you've all been through or that we've all been through to some degree in some way in our own way yeah. as, as a catalyst for some great things, like the changes. It's, it's like, it's you time. What did we say in that first meeting? It's you time now. Like it's time to freaking do this for you because a better you is going to be better for everything that you care about in your life. Is it? And, you know, I think, like I said earlier for people that join, cause now we have quite a little bit of an audience, but um, for what I said earlier, like you heal to a certain extent from time, from, you know, going through the process of getting off the meds. But when you come to the end of it and you're like two years off or three years off or four years off or whatever, you know, however long it takes for you, you, you deserve a good, healthy life. Like a good, I I say it on, I say it to some clients and I'm like, when I say it coming out of my mouth, it sounds like woo woo to me. Like, no, you do get the opportunity to build whatever kind of life you want. Like that is true. It's true. It sounds radical. It's scary. Like, but it's tr- absolutely true. Like, do you think I dreamed of living in a van, traveling across the country, eating good food and talking to you on Facebook live? Mm-hmm. I never had that dream for myself seven years ago when I was in acute withdrawal from psych drugs. No, but health and nutrition and strength and good sleep and movement and sunlight and walking barefoot. And, um, well, that's what we're saying. Those things are the precursor to other great things. That's the base. It, it really is. It's, it base. is the precursor. And you get, you got to start where you can, you know, yes. because, um, again, that perfectionist mindset says, all right, all right, now I know I got to do all these things and that's overwhelming. That's scary. Right. But, yeah, if, so but can, if I start with, I'm just, go ahead. No, I was going to say, can, so can you talk about consistency versus perfectionism? Well, we've kind of already touched on it, right? Mm-hmm. So when you start health habits, um, they, they just don't, you don't see immediate results from working out for three days, right? You may feel good from it. You may feel sore from it, but, but you know, you stick with it for three months and you're like, okay, I'm starting to see something now. And then you stick with it for three years. You're a completely different person. So it's really just understanding that there's um, a slight delayed gratification in a lot of the things that we need to do for our health and for ourselves, which is if you just have that awareness and that understanding, it helps you be consistent with the things that you need to do. But the consistency is so important because you're not going to see the transformation. You know, when you see someone like now I'm, I'm uh, the leanest that I've ever been, right? I was 270 in high school. I mean, maybe I was this weight when I was in high school or something like that. But mm-hmm. but so if you look at where I was when I was 270 compared to now, it's like, wow, what a transformation. But that's not factoring in all the days and all the things that happened in between, you know, on a day-to-day and week-to-week basis. Like a lot of the changes are undetectable. Mm-hmm. But if you're consistent with things over time, the, the great thing is that you do start to notice things. You do start to notice changes in yourself. And for some things that happens relatively fast and some a little bit longer, but, but once you start to notice those things, it's addictive and you want to keep doing it because you want to keep seeing those results. And then the great thing about it is you keep those results and they're cumulative over time. And before you know it, you're a completely different person, but it starts with the simple daily things like a simple daily thing and building on that thing and just being consistent with it, whatever it is. That's it. No. And I want to say something about that. Like, I, I always thought like, I need to be motivated. I don't want to go to the gym. I don't feel like going. I'm tired. Motivation is not going to be there sometimes. That's not you just it. Do it. It's you not know? it. I heard some stupid reel on Instagram and it was like, uh, Jayco Willick. What's his, you know, Jayco, yeah. And yeah. he said something like, it's not about consistency or it's not about motivation. It's about being consistent. Like <clears throat> I don't want to go to the gym. I don't care if I want to go. I go anyway. And yeah, now, absolutely. now I want, I don't want anybody in my audience to misread that as I'm saying, you need to push through your symptoms when you're sick and you can't even bend over. Cause I was there. I couldn't work out for two years at all. Like zero, it wasn't happening. Yeah. I'm saying like, when you can get there and you get it, I felt the feeling in my body, Angie, you need to move. You need to like lift heavy things and walk in the woods. I feel right. I feel it right now. Like I need to go hiking every day for like a mm-hmm. month. Like that's how much like vitality I feel has come back to my body. You know, I just want to move all the time. So it's not about like being motivated or like, 
I want to do it. No, I don't want to do it, but I don't want to feel like crap either. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, your motivation is what it is that you want to accomplish, but that motivation is, it's just not going to be there every day for you to just, just jump up excited to do the things that you have to do. There's just things that you need to do, but that's why it's important. I think to just think about like, what is it, what's possible? What is it that I want and why am I doing this? And then what is it that I need to work on or focus on? Yeah. And once you get that list or that thing or whatever, you just have to understand, I just got to put this into practice. I got to yeah. start somewhere, you know, start small and then build on it, but just be consistent with it to the best of your abilities. Yeah. So everybody in the audience, I want you to know, you can ask him questions. So if you have a question, post it in the comments. Um, if you're watching this later on YouTube, I'm sure he'll come back and answer it if it's it's quick. And oh, easy. yeah, absolutely. But So go ahead and Love you questions. can post questions and Jill, my assistant is going to send them to me on text if you have any. But so let's let's get down to the the nitty gritty. I have a couple questions just from clients nitty that gritty. Asked, asked me this week. So number one, the title of our talk is nutrition, sleep, and strength for emotional health. Mm-hmm. So I hate to ask you this again in a different way, but like, what? what are some small things that people could start implementing? Just small, like people oh, in yeah. my audience that are just getting their health back, or they just want to do something that'll make them feel better. Like, what can you what can you say about each one of those categories? So, yeah. So if we break it down into each one of those health foundations, like starting, simple, I think, I think that learning how to read labels and look for appropriate ingredients in food is a really great place to start because a lot of people come, like most people don't know how to read labels properly. They really don't. Like I, I think about when I used to read labels, I'd be in the grocery store and I would just go through this motion of like picking something up and looking at the back of it. But when I thought about it, I really didn't know what I was looking for. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe I was looking at calories or, or, uh, uh, fat or protein, or I don't know. But when you start to learn how to look for toxic ingredients and avoid toxic ingredients and find things that are made with better ingredients, that by itself is liberating because you realize there's a lot of great options out there that just don't have the toxicity, you know, that, um, that the modern uh, ultra processed food supply has, you know, so uh, learning how to read labels. And I was thinking I could share, I have a swaps document that has that, you know, the thing I shared with you with the, mm-hmm. um, the main oh, things yeah. to look for when reading labels or something like that. So, yeah. so learning how to read labels and look for ingredients would be a really, really great place to start in the nutrition realm. And honestly, the, the best thing that you can learn to do is embrace animal foods. And I know that we probably have some vegan vegetarian people watching this and I, I empathize with you. I've been there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's one of the biggest missing links in this modern world and what we hear from the mainstream narrative is that somehow these animal foods that we've consumed for um you know uh, millions of years hundreds of thousands if not millions of years it's part of what made us human and there's so much nutritional value in animal foods um you're not going to get that from eating just plants so embracing animal foods is an absolute game changer you know um focusing on your protein maximizing your protein it's a really hot topic now i mean it's starting to get more and more popular but that's the best way to do it with animal foods. Mm-hmm. So in the nutrition realm, I think very easy, simple things to do would be um, reading labels and learning what to look for. Um, and that way you can find good alternatives to the things that you really enjoy that aren't as toxic and then fully embracing animal foods. And, and then if I could throw just one more in the nutrition realm, mm-hmm. it would be trying to get your body to learn how to make energy the right way, you know, because most of us are carb dependent and carbivores. And, and this is not about keto and it's not about low carb. There's some simple, easy things that you can do, but focusing on training your body, how to make its own energy and being self-reliant and metabolically flexible. Um, that's going to make you feel good. It's going to help your body composition. It's going to help you thinking it's going to help you, um, you know, with your withdrawal symptoms. Mm-hmm. So that would be my, if I could throw a third one in on the nutrition piece. I love that. So now what about sleep? Um, man, for sleep, it's so simple, right? It's like, um, Thinking in terms of if I was living out in the woods, like how would things be? You know, I would get up when the sun came up. I would get natural light. I would be exposed to brightness throughout the day. I'd get sun on my skin. And, you know, when it got to be nighttime, like I may have a fire, but I wouldn't have all the stimulus that we're all exposed to. So, so I think the best thing you can do, like, can I share a story about another client? I think we're talking about him. So um, he's the, uh, the amputee, John, what'd you call the amputee? Not an amputee. Oh, the amputee. Okay. Okay. Hey, he's he's a man. I've gotten to be really good friends with him, and and he hired me to come over and help him get into a walker from a wheelchair, right? And every time I come over, he is. I'm like, I'm like, all right, I'm all pumped up coming in the door, you know, because we got a lot of physical work from to do. 
And um, I'm like, how are we doing today? And every time I came in, he's just like, well, oh, it's just not feeling too good, you know, not sleeping very well. And I'm like, hey, was just, do you mind if I just share like a, a really easy pro tip with you that's not going to take a lot of effort? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. I said, so every morning when you first get up, take your chair over here to the uh, front door and open it up and behind the screen, just sit there and just let the sun come in, let the brightness hit your, your eyes and, and don't be wearing your glasses or anything like that. And the next time I came over, he said it was an absolute game changer, something that simple. So, so just getting natural light into your eyes as soon as you can, it starts to anchor your uh, cortisol spike in the morning that's necessary for you to, to get the day going and get the body moving. Um, and then your body starts to get used to that. And it helps with melatonin production because you start to make melatonin in response to that brightness into your eyes. But then your body is smart enough to hold on to the melatonin and not secrete it until the evening. So then the flip side of that is when the sun goes down, that would be your indication to minimize your stimulus and try not to like be on phones and computers and watching TV, or at least try to minimize exposure to brightness. Yep. And so I'm telling you, the two most important things. that has changed my life and withdrawal because and I'm just going to say this for our audience to kind of translate what you just said. Like I did not sleep naturally for 13 years because there was a medication doing that for me, you know? So yeah. And when I came off of that and you should expect like my number one symptom for all my clients is insomnia. And it's mostly because their, their neurotransmitters are so screwed up that like you feel this adrenaline all night. You can't sleep. There's no guided meditation. We're not taking Ambien. Like there's no sledgehammer that's going to take us out. Like we just yeah. are, it's just so dysregulated, you know? So when I started keep, I mean, I live in a van, so I'm outside. My door's open right now. The sun is coming in here. It's coming in the back of my eye, you know? So constantly I'm exposed to sunlight like more than other people. It has yeah. changed my life. I was always a night owl. I was up till two in the morning for the last 20 years. You know what I mean? Now I'm, the soon as the sun comes up, my brain knows. It, I, I think it even has to do with eyelid thickness. Like when the light <laughs> starts hitting, it wakes me up. It has completely re-transformed my own sleep-wake cycle. Yeah, no, I mean, think yeah, think about ahead. days that you spent at the beach all day, mm -hmm. right? Or, or like again, if you're out camping, you're outside, or a long hike, you know, this that you're out there for like six hours or something. Mm -hmm. Like you almost always sleep like a chip that night, right? And a big part of it is because you're exposed to the light that you're supposed to be exposed to. You have the natural light coming into your eyes. You have the light exposure on your skin. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievably powerful. And again, you know, thinking in context of regardless of where you're at in your journey. And whether you're still on medications or weaning off of medications, like this is something you can do no matter what. And it's going to make things better, okay. guaranteed. It may not completely solve things no. uh, or get you to where you want to be, but it's going to make things better, 100%. Yeah. And part of me thinks like, this might sound like biohacking or something, but part of me thinks like when you're healing from psych drugs and everything is screwed up, you have to help your DNA remember like what it was, like what it was built. What It's like a reminder. So like social engagement, when you're looking at a face, your body like regulates, you know, mm. um, the light coming in that helps remind your brain, like, okay, this is your, your DNA is there. It's just, maybe we haven't used that for years or something, you know? So I feel like it's just like a tool. I've seen it happen. Like I have clients that have psychosis. They're not on meds. They're completely separate. They're not in withdrawal. And, and their parent will text me and say, the, their sleep schedule is completely off. What do I do? I'm like, just open the window, pull the blinds mm -hmm. up in the yeah. morning. And, and I'm not kidding you. It's like freaking magic. I don't, your, you know, your so, innate intelligence remembers, like it's, it remembers. there's a, a very primordial component to it yeah. for real. And it, and it doesn't take that long. So, yeah. and just one more and point, super simple to do. One more point is that the sunlight, it can't come through. Sit next to the window at least, you know, like start there. Okay. So yeah. last subject, strength. What can we do? Because a lot of my clients well, have been in bed. They've lost all their muscle tone. They have to rebuild. Like they can't even bend over without shaking. Like their muscles yeah. are that out of, you know, from dysregulation. So tell me, what can we do? Uh, on, on the light thing, can I just uh, yeah. uh, confirm something you just said? So yeah, it's really important um, when you're enjoying this natural brightness, right? That you do it without sunglasses, you know, mm -hmm. that you actually let some natural light hit your retinas that's not filtered because yeah. filtered light isn't as powerful. So yeah. Um, yeah, from a fitness perspective, again, it's you got to meet it where you can. So I think a really good place to start, a lot of people get overwhelmed when they think, okay, I know I need to do, join a gym and I need to start doing all these different kinds of workouts. I need to work out an hour and a half a day and go running and do all, you know, um, I would say to start where you can, I think morning walks are super powerful. Mm -hmm. I think ending the day with a walk is super powerful and then learning how to fit fitness in throughout your day 
is just as good as having a workout, you know? So if I'm finding ways to move and take breaks throughout the day, which is good for my brain anyway, like if I'm sitting here, just focused on really intense mental activity, like that's, that's a, an energy drain right there. Mm -hmm. And if I learn to take some breaks to step outside and get some fresh air and do a little bit of movement, if I got some dumbbells or kettlebells or something like that. And I mean, there's a ton of YouTube videos on different things that you can do. Just having a mindset of, I want to be constantly active all the time. And all the time could mean starting out with a morning walk and an evening walk. Um, and then trying to fit in some breaks throughout the day. Like I've seen clients experience tremendous transformations from that without ever joining a gym. Wow. And then once you learn about things that you can do, like, you know, how to do different movements, you can start to piece those in throughout the day. And it's almost like, you know, you have these breaks that add up to a workout at the end of the day because you've got so much activity in throughout the day. Mm -hmm. But, um, but again, it, it all depends on where they're at. You know, if, if they're starting from nothing and they want to get, you know, to doing something, I love walks. I think walks are powerful. You know, walks are time with your own mind for your own thinking. Yeah. Um, you start to habit stack things. So if you get a walk in the morning and the sun's coming up, you get some natural light into your eyes. You got some time with your own mind. You can think to yourself or have your personal quiet time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that you can do and get done just from having that morning walk. And same thing with the evening walk. Yeah. And just so there's a couple of clients, I think I saw like four of them this week that they're all the, the woman that walks through the neighborhood. Like they're known as, that. Oh, yeah. you get, the neighbors you get known, come out, you get, recognized, yeah. you get known. I know Shelly's yeah. in the audience and she's, she's texting uh cute little comments there. Shelly's one of them where you're walking the neighborhood and people start to know. And so that's, it's it. good. Like you're hitting a whole bunch of birds with one stone. And, and listen, I know from my journey, I could only walk to the mailbox. That was it. Yeah. I walked yeah. to the mailbox and I went back and then I walked to the corner and I went back and then I walked around the block once and I came back. Exactly. So like we said slowly, before, slowly. starting simple, right? It's yes. like, if you, if you determine for yourself, my first thing that I want to do fitness wise is I just want to start to walk every morning, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be 45 minutes. It yeah. could literally be five minutes. It could be to the end of the block and back because what you're trying to do is cultivate the habit. Mm -hmm. of showing up and doing this thing. And then once you get the habit of showing up and doing this thing, then you can start to optimize the yeah. thing or do yeah. more or add to it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I love that you brought that up. So I think plus you're getting light in your eyes, plus you're getting movement. It's really good for your brain. It's getting circulation, blood, oxygen to your, I mean, it's like so such a good activity and it literally takes nothing. And sometimes I would put just headphones on and I listen to a talk or listen to, you know, morning meditation, anything. But yeah. it's, it's such a powerful tool. And again, you don't need a gym or anything. It's awesome. Well, and I, I love what you said and uh, whoever commented about being known as the person, right? Because everywhere I go, I've always walked. I've yeah. always walked since as long as I can remember, definitely since being in the army, right? And I was always the guy. And I was, then I was always the guy with the dog. And like even here in Vegas, I'm living in a different area of Vegas right now. And there's this park that I go to every morning with Conan. I go out there and I throw the Frisbee. We do our loops. And I've met like five people. You know, just mm -hmm. that come up and say, you, you know, you can't help but want to talk to someone that you see consistently on a regular basis and just ask me, hey, what's your story? What's going on? You know, so it's a great way to connect with people, too. And even if you're not connecting like verbally and talking to them, mm -hmm. just making these eye connections, these head nods, you know, you see people driving by and they smile because they see you out there every morning. Mm -hmm. There's well, a lot of great things that come from it. Yeah. Good thing. And then you, you just see interesting things like, oh, that neighbor has cool lawn furniture, you know, like I would Christmas oh, yeah. decorations and Halloween decorations, you know, I used to, it's like a tour of the neighborhood. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, you gotta so do we have to I mean, cause what's the alternative? You're just going to be cooped up and no, all, I, so I, 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 I can't imagine not walking. Right. Me either. Okay. So we have two questions in the audience. One two. is somebody's asking a question about diabetes. He, he turned diabetic diabetic too, but he's reversed all of his numbers. He lost so much weight. Nice job. His numbers can continue to improve. This is a husband of one of my clients. Um, so they want to know, were you type two or pre-diabetic and uh, what's a good habit to eat diabetes or reverse? Um, so you broke up right there at the last piece of that. What was that again? Was I, and then I'm what? So sorry. Were you type two diabetic or pre-diabetic and what uh -huh. is, what are some things that going backwards keep the numbers going down oh, okay so um so first of all congratulations and great job and those results like uh give you momentum to keep wanting to do more and see more results you know so um yeah i was pre-diabetic and um i think the best advice i have we've talked about this angie is um first of all i don't know what you're doing or, or where you're at with this but a lot of people when they get a diagnosis um, they feel like they have to overhaul everything and like keto or low carb or something like that's the answer. And I'd say 80% of my clients are pre-diabetic or diabetic. 
And just switching over to real food is mm -hmm. such a huge win with blood sugar handling, right? Um, so uh, making sure that your carbohydrates, and again, I've, I've never seen it necessary to go low carb or keto. Um, and by the way, you're still burning fat for fuel without being in ketosis. There's this false mm -hmm. misconception that ketosis is the only way to burn fat for fuel. Mm -hmm. You can teach your body how to burn free fatty acids for energy and it has nothing to do with ketosis. Mm -hmm. um, but my point here is that um, you don't have to go to these extremes to get these results. And in fact, most of my clients never have to go low carb to see these changes. Um, so just switching over to real food is good. Making sure that your carbohydrates are from real food sources. And that's one thing that you do want to moderate. Like I do allow my clients to eat as much protein as they want, as much meat as they want, because it's so nourishing. Um, but our, uh, a very simple, basic rule with carbohydrates is making sure that they're from real food sources. So like starches, like potatoes and sweet potatoes and rice, um, fruits, you know, um, any kind of fruit, but just making sure those things are a smaller part of what you do. You know, so if I have like a, a, a meal, I'm not going to have a meal of fruit. I'm going to have a meal of, you know, a steak and some veggies and then maybe a, a little piece of fruit or a little bit of rice or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So carbs from real food sources smaller amounts. And then the next thing would be just allowing some natural space in between your main meals. Um, most of my clients start out with three meals per day, no snacking. Um, and then the, I think the default for the majority of the people that I've worked with over the years is two meals per day, you know, because it's in that space that the body's learning how to make energy on its own and regulate its own blood sugar. Um, and that doesn't mean that you need to force space. And it doesn't mean that you need to fast drastically it just means that you need to acknowledge that if I'm munching on stuff and snacking on stuff all day long, I'm constantly secreting insulin. And so insulin resistance, prediabetes, diabetes, right, is, is a combination of inappropriate foods. Well, we've just knocked that out by saying eat real food and have your carbohydrates and smaller amounts from real food sources. But it's also uh, this idea that we've been sold that we need to eat every two or three freaking hours to keep our metabolism stoked, Right. And, and the logic, which is not logic at all behind that is that they say, well, it helps you uh, burn more calories because you're eating more often. And that's like saying, I'm trying to put more gas in my car so I can get to empty. It doesn't make any sense when you think about it. I, I need to eat more often to burn more calories. Um, so the reality is no. that you need, you need space because that's the purpose of your stored body fat. You need some time that your body can learn how to tap into this, this battery that we all have on us that the body can use for energy. Um, so, so tying all that together, the perfect formula for blood sugar handling issues, prediabetes, diabetes is going to be real food, um, making sure your carbohydrates are from real food sources and just in smaller amounts compared to everything else. You don't have to be low carb or keto and then making sure that you're not grazing all day. And for most people starting out three meals a day, no snacking is a really good place. Um, and then uh, eventually most of my clients gravitate towards two meals per day, no snacking. Um, and that's pretty effortless. So does that, does that help does that answer the question? Nailed okay. it. And, and you said exactly what I told my sister last week, cause she hired a health coach and it was terrible. And I was like, what, this lady's telling you to eat five times a day. No, uh, that means you're not eating enough protein. You know, and I was like trying to teach her. So you just basically said exactly what I said to her. Yeah. So, that is like, yeah. it's just, it's such archaic advice and it's still being given out, you know? know and, and you said a, a bad, like, I can't even tell you how many people come see me and they like, they just got done with two or three other health coaches. You know, and this comes back to, you know, everyone wants the same thing, but when it, at the end of the day, whatever it is you're following or the person that you're trying to learn from, to some degree, it has to make sense. Like right. you have to understand it and it has to feel right versus someone coming to you and handing you a meal plan and saying, this is the way to do things. And you don't get to ask any questions or like, you know, a big part of what we're doing together, it's education based, right? We got a manual and we have uh, blog posts and things that we share. So Anyway, I don't want to go off too yeah, much of a that's tangent. That's another question. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. So let me ask the next audience question, but it's about um, animal meats. And I want to share a story from one of my clients that they were having, and they said I could, so that's the only reason I'm sharing this. Um, but he was four years off. He still had a movement disorder. It's called akathisia. He was experiencing extremely, you know, high intrusive thoughts, suicidal thoughts, like extremely sick. And I was working with him on diet and I was like, dude, something's wrong with your gut. I don't know what it is, but like, we got to look at the gut. And I was trying to get him to eat vegetables. He didn't want to do it. He was eating crackers, like barely surviving on just like crap food, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, if you don't want to eat vegetables, that's cool. But like, we got to do something with your gut. So he, on his own accord, I did not tell him to do this. And I'm so glad because I think it's better when it comes from him, but he was like, I got to try carnivore. 
I'm not telling people to go try carnivore, but I'm just giving this anecdote. He went carnivore and in like four days, his symptoms were 50%. I could not believe it. I've never seen anything like that, especially in our community. It was drastic. It was overnight almost. And he was like, Angie, like I am working. Like I'm sitting quietly. Like I don't even understand. And he, so I saw it before my very eyes and I'm not saying that's everyone's answer. I'm not because everybody's kind of different and what makes them feel good. I, I know I have to eat lots of veggies. I just enjoy it. It helps me poop. Like I just love it, you know? So talk about animal foods. That's what the person wants to know. Oh, I was going to say, cause yeah, it sounded like something in the uh, questions made you uh, think yeah, about they, that. that they were, the question was um, how do you feel <clears throat> about the benefit of organ meat? Oh yeah. Okay. So again, um, everyone's going to come at this with uh, different perspectives, but I just, I got to say what I know is the truth. And I got to say what I believe because I was a vegan for two years. Okay. And I was a hundred percent hardcore with it. Like I, I still have emails where I sent messages over and over to my friends and family, trying to convince them, this is the way to do things. And mm-hmm. here's how you combine your different grains and legumes to get certain amino acid profiles. And, and it wrecked me It messed me up, you know? Um, now if it's working for you, that's great. So this isn't like a conversation about bashing being vegan or or vegetarian, if it's working great. But, but the reality is that if we're think about, you know, remember what we talked about in in our first session, right? It's like, what is the purpose of me eating food in the first place? Like when you really think about it, what is the evolutionary primordial biological reason for me eating? When you really think about it, it's to give your body nutrients or nutrition, right? Right. And you also have to create energy from food to some degree, but we've already said like we ideally want to be fat burners or metabolically flexible so that we can use both fat and glucose for energy, right? So if we come back to the nutrition piece, what is it that we need? What what nutrients do we need? Well, you know, uh, the reason we call nutrients nutrients is because those are the things we need, right? Minerals, vitamins, fatty acids, amino acids, cofactors, you know, coenzymes and all this other stuff. But, but if we step a a little bit bigger picture, a little bit more macro. Like if I want to build an amazing animal, which I'm an animal, right? If I want to build this animal, the best thing that I can eat is animal because the animal gives this animal everything this animal needs to be this animal, right? If I want to build, if I want to build muscle, what's the best thing for me to consume? Eat muscle. A lot. Yeah. yeah, A lot of people would say protein. Okay. Well, let's look a a little bit bigger. If I want to build muscle, the most direct path to that is consuming muscle because then I give my muscle everything it needs to build my muscle, you know? And and the way that our digestive systems work, it's a very direct nutrient to nutrient assimilation system. Meaning that if I want, you know, if you go to your doctor and your doctor says, Hey, you're uh, low in magnesium. What does he say to do? Take magnesium, right? If you go to your doctor and you're low on your uh, 25 OHD or or your uh, vitamin D, what does he say to do? Take vitamin D. So, Mm -hmm. so we already know at some level, that this human organism does really good on direct nutrient to nutrient assimilation. Meaning if I want a specific nutrient, I need to eat that nutrient, but we're not just going to eat individual nutrients. If I want this animal, then one of the best things that I can consume are animals and specifically red meat and herbivore meat. But back to the question about organs. um, If I can acknowledge the power that comes from eating animal foods in general, well, this animal that I am is more than just muscle. I've got organs (laughs) organs <laughs> that need to be nourished right so if i eat liver it's one of the best things to do for my liver because there's I know. well if you sneak it in there i'm you know, working on it i'm working on we you like know that. i've had a hard time eating steak my whole life and so with paul i went and got these really grass good grass-fed steaks and i was like come on let's eat it he cooked it for me and it was delicious you, you just need me as a personal chef that's, that's what i need i'm just moving in okay so <laughs> But, but, was, say, but let me, can I just yeah, elaborate on that real quick? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, so there's been, um, and I can share this research. Uh, there's been um, um, a, a lot of studies that done that use uh, isotope tracers or something like that, where they show that if you consume organs, those organs tend to go straight to the organ that they're associated with. Meaning wow. like if, if I have, um, you know, uh, damaged liver or something like that. One of the best things I can do is eat liver. And if you look at uh, primordial ancestral populations still in existence, that's exactly what shaman do. If somebody has a heart condition, they feed them heart, you know, and that's not all that it does because these organs are also massive, like multivitamin, multimineral concentrations of nutrients. Mm -hmm. So you're giving your whole body some uh, tremendous nutritional value, but then also it's very nourishing for your organs. So 
I hope that's that it. answers that. But how do I feel about organs? I freaking love organs. And if you can't get organs I've seen in, him eat it. And he uses yeah. a knife and a cutting board and he just sticks in it. <laughs> like yeah, a caveman. If, if, if you can't if you can't get organs in or you don't like the taste, like I've got a couple recipes I'd be happy to share. Like I've got a um a beef and liver meatloaf and uh, beef and liver burgers and, and it's such a small part of um of what you're doing there that you don't really taste it. Notice, and there's yeah. and there's blends out there, you know, a lot of uh, uh companies are making really, really good um blends mm -hmm. of uh, uh ground beef with various organs that you you just sneak it in there you can't really taste it and then i'm a big fan of organ supplements too so that's good and uh oh that's one one last thing i want to say about that is one thing i discovered on uh i used to listen to what's his name sean stevenson he's like a nutrition guy on youtube and he said this one thing when i was in withdrawal and like trying to get my life back and heal and everything he said every food that you eat is building every cell of your body. So choose wisely. And so that's Absolutely. why I'm just, I'm just not a fan of the whole, I know this goes around in our community. You can eat whatever you want and you'll still heal. Yeah, maybe. But like, what are you building your body with, you know, and that's not to say just people in our community need to watch what they eat. That's everybody. I don't care if you're in withdrawal or not. Every like, human being. Normal, normal. Well, if, if you yeah. want to, if you want to, if you want to thrive now, if you don't care and, and, but eventually it's going to come back at you. You know what I mean? Eventually there's going to be enough pain and suffering from not addressing that, that you're going to have to address it. But I would push back on that whole moderation thing. I think that's one of the biggest problems. And again, if this works for you, great. But like, you know, if I come in here and I say, you can have everything in moderation, then I think that just opens a slippery slope for a lot of people. I right? can't do and, that. I'm not a moderating and, kind of person. If you tell me I can yeah. drink one Starbucks a week, I'm going to drink like four. Like I just yeah. I don't. And, and that's it, you. So, so we're, we're also not yeah. saying like you can find, like, you know, you can build in your own personal flexibility. Like I can right. say, Hey, you know what? Once a week, I want to have some bread. Once a week, I want to do some pasta. Like, and that's a personal decision, but, but the message of saying everything in moderation, no, there's just some things that are just toxic and you probably shouldn't consume it, but maybe you choose to, right? But the, the messaging of everything in moderation is okay, I think is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So this is the last question from a client. They want to know mm -hmm. about brain health. And I've had two people this week talk about, like, I'm older, I'm in my 60s, now I'm going into my 70s. And I'm worried about the impact of taking all the medications that I took for so many years. Like, what can I do to keep my brain healthy or to, re, you know, revigorate it? And I hope yeah. you don't say to eat brain. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was just, I was just going to say, that, that is one thing that you can do. You could eat brain. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but what else could they do? What about um, brain health? Brain health. Okay. So I think that's a great question. I love it because we all care about this. And I don't know if you've noticed, Angie, but the older I get, the more like I feel like sometimes I'm like, man, is my memory failing? Did I forget that? And where was this thing that I put, you know, or maybe I've always been yeah, like yeah. that. I don't know. So, but but it yeah, just I makes do. me remember like it's very important, right? As we age, we want to age gracefully. Um, we want to keep cognitive function. We want to keep function in general. So I love this question. Um, so so basically a lot of the things that we've already talked about, the lowest hanging fruit is going to be the health foundations, right? Learning how to eat real food, learning how to be active every day, getting your sleep straight, having some personal quiet time, like those things, like there's just nothing that replaces it. Me and a buddy of mine right now, I have this circle of uh, nutrition cohorts that we're always kind of brainstorming and masterminding together. Mm -hmm. um, we've been tinkering with these uh, mitochondrial uh, function stacks. So like a bunch of different supplements and we notice benefits from it, but, but what we notice is even more powerful are the easy things to do every single day. Get natural sunlight, go for a walk, get your blood moving, right? Um, I think uh, from a brain health perspective, learning to be metabolically flexible, like we, like I said before, like teaching your body how to use fat for fuel is extremely beneficial. Um, when it comes to nutrients, then you definitely want things that give your your uh, some brain some good nourishing fat-based energy. So things that have medium chain triglycerides in it, uh, full fat dairy products, if you tolerate it, are really, really great. Even some really good quality MCT oil can be really, really useful. Um, and then uh, I think hydration with electrolytes has been really, really useful and powerful for some of my older clients. Um, and then some specific nutrients. Creatine is a no-brainer. Every human on the planet should be taking creatine that can have access to it because creatine usually is, is thought of in uh, like bodybuilding and athletic performance realms because it does help with the uh, 
production of ATP, but it also has like tremendous brain function benefits, which is why it's like one of the supplements recommended for a lot of vegans if they're willing to take it. So creatine is a no brainer. You're looking for five grams of creatine per day, just consistently. There's no loading and cycling or anything like that. Um, and then choline, choline, unbelievably powerful. And there's different versions of it, but the natural version you can get from, again, eating animal foods, egg yolks contain a lot of choline, great for brain function, great for liver detoxification. There's a couple of different versions of choline that you can get in supplement form that are really, really useful. Um, and then, man, I was thinking about this the other day, just not watching TV and minimizing your social media exposure and instead trying to have true social connections. And, you know, if you're with someone or living with someone or you have a partner or, or you know, family members you visit on a regular basis, instead of watching TV, like playing games, you know, playing board games and card games and stuff like that, like something that enhances cognitive function, mm -hmm. which includes interacting with other people and, and then things that are not necessarily TV based. Love it. I, I do not own. Well, I own a TV, but I've only plugged it in once and I haven't watched TV in like three years at least. It's awesome. OK, so we're yeah. moving to the end. All right. Let's talk about coaching. Like why, why should people work with coaches? Um, what's good about that? What are the downfalls? How do you vet a coach? Yeah. Um, I mean, we've kind of touched on a lot of this already, right? There's already, I think it's a great thing to be a rebel. I think it's a great thing to be a skeptic. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing right now is because I want to buck the system. I want to buck the mainstream narrative, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, but you have to learn to blend that with not letting it interfere with learning how to do what it is that you need to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think like you, your message is a lot about um, uh, empowerment and informed consent and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. So just having this attitude of being an educated consumer and learning to ask questions and also learning to say no. Like I get, I got, I think most people when they go to see a doctor, they feel like, well, this is my doctor. This is who I got to see. Mm -hmm. When I go see a doctor, if I don't like what he has to say, I go find another doctor. Right. I'm paying you. <laughs> Exactly. I'm paying you, You're you know, working for me. So yeah, exactly. And I found somebody that I absolutely love. Like he's just so great and he's just so vibrant and he's on board with the way that I eat and all these other things. Um, and he orders the blood work that I want when I want it. And like, we have great conversations. So anyway, my point is, how do you find someone? Well, just, you know, understand that that protective mechanism that you've used to get you to where you are right now can be an ally. It's great. Um, just let it, let it force you to ask questions and really try to connect with people to, to find someone that feels right. You know, someone had mentioned earlier, you know, I went to a, a dietitian or you said, I think your mm -hmm. sister went to a health coach or something like yeah, that. And yeah. it just was a bad, it's bad experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you know, mo like I do a free discovery call. So, and that's our chance to kind of get to know each other. And, and, you know, you want to have a good vibe with somebody. <laughs> you want, mm -hmm. you want to ask a few pointed questions uh, and see if it makes sense and resonates with you, you know, versus just having someone tell you what to do without explaining any of the why behind it. But mm -hmm. um, now to answer the question, why a coach, you know, it's taken me um, and I'm pretty solid with most of my health practices now. It's pretty, I'm on the autopilot, mm -hmm. but, um, but there was a lot of learning, you know, it's, it's been over 10 years of books and, uh, you know, experiments and podcasts and seminars and certifications and schooling and all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I don't need to read another nutrition book to know <laughs> what's appropriate and what's not. I'm not right. saying that I can't learn, but I think the benefit of working with a coach is number one, it can be, if you find the right person, a shortcut to health, right? You don't have to go through 10 years or, or however long of all the different reading and, and schooling and all that kind of stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, I encourage my clients yeah. to, to read. Actually, I give them book reading assignments all the time. So, um, so a good coach can be a shortcut to health, but a good coach also is not someone that just sits there and tells you what to do. It's a, it's a co-creation process where mm -hmm. um, you feel like you have autonomy and you're in control and you make the decisions. Mm -hmm. And that coach is there to kind of support you and guide you through that process. I mean, yes, the coach usually has some education and some wisdom to share, but it should never feel like he's just telling you what to do, right? Yeah. And just throwing it on you. And and mm -hmm. there's got to be some kind of um, an autonomy. Like I feel like I I'm the one that's making the decisions and pulling the strings here to some degree. Um, and then a coach can be great for accountability. You know, it's just mm -hmm. that support, right? So like I'm texting you well almost every day. <laughs> every day, but it, it, it like pumps me up, especially in the morning. He he'll send me little texts like, "Make it a great day." 
or he'll say, Hey, what's up? <laughs> you better yeah. kick ass this morning. You know, it, it helps me so much. Yeah. Just, yeah. So just having someone there that, you know, is like a co-pilot, just yeah. knowing that, you know, I think for a lot of people is useful. And I, and I, I know because I've had bad coaching experiences and I have a lot of people mm-hmm. that come to me that have had bad experiences. And I, I just, it blows my mind that some people don't provide that service. You know, I want people to have an exceptional experience when they work with me. Right. I want people to to walk away from working with me and be like, hey, that was, a, you know, I, my life is transformed. I know what it is I need to do. That was a great experience. And I just blows my mind that, that someone doesn't do that. But anyway, another benefit of a good coach would be um, that accountability and that support, you know, just and, and even just knowing that you got someone there to lean on or ask a question or something like that. So was that all the questions you that had? Was good. There? Yeah, that was really yeah. good. And I'll just add one thing from from the withdrawal coaching perspective. Like there's a few of us that do it and everybody has a different personality, different vibe, different philosophy. So I think like just always pick what makes sense to you. Like what uh, what, you know, that like an intuition about it, like what feels yep. right, what feels good. And that's not to say like, try other, try a whole bunch and just decide like, who do you, who do you like? And then my second point is like, look at the person. Like I, I always look at like, I, they have something that I want and they got it and they worked hard for it. And I want to know how to do that. And like, what can they teach me? So I look at it, yep. like, look at their life too. Like, do you, do you want to be like them? Do you, is there something that you admire about them or something that you see in them that you want yourself? That's important to me. Hundred percent. Does this person look like they walk the walk or walk the right. talk? Right. Yeah. Because exactly. because if you go to a personal trainer, no offense, I'm sure there's some fit personal trainers that that look out of shape and they're not or something like that. But in general, if I go to a personal trainer, like I want someone to look jacked and fit, you know. Right. Right. So, so if yeah. you're going to see a nutritionist or um, a health coach and and even, I mean, even a doctor, basic, you know, your doctor, too, even a doctor, a absolutely. therapist, like do. Do they make sense? Do they feel good to me? You know, that's nothing worse. I'm serious. There's nothing worse than going to a therapist or somebody else that you just like feel more traumatized when you left. Like you shouldn't feel like that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. And that should know? tell you something. That means don't go back, you know. Don't go but, back. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. You know, the person we need to make a list here because you're asking, like, how do you vet someone? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you, you have to have a conversation with them somehow, right? Yeah. And that and that's your opportunity to ask questions. And then do they look the part? <laughs> do they did they walk the walk? You know, what are their beliefs? Like what, you know, like if you ask me, you know, like, what are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you, it's very client driven. But then if you ask me, like, are you a fan of animal foods? You're like, I'll coach you through vegan if you want to, but this is what I believe. And this is why, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that leads us to the last question. And I'm sad about that because I enjoy talking oh, no. to you all the time, but <laughs> I'm also hungry and I have bacon and eggs calling my name right now. <laughs> so uh, let's end with hope. Cause that's what I always like to end with. Like oh, yeah. what kind, what kind of transformations have you seen? What kind of healing have you seen? This is why I do this work because I get to watch people heal all the time and I just love yeah. it and it's beautiful and it's a sacred thing to me. So can you talk about like, what are some of the transformations that you've seen with health? Oh my gosh. I mean, almost every client that I have is, I'm going to start tearing up. Um, it's okay. We do that often it, it, around here. I know. Yeah. It's beautiful to watch. Beautiful. It is to be a part of that process. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, like we, I think we had talked about this the other day. Um, anything is possible. Everything is possible, right? You just don't feel like it where you're at. And a part of the reason you don't feel like that sometimes is because you don't have this health component. You know, it's like imagine feeling better, having more energy. Imagine your body composition moving in a direction that you're happy with. Mm-hmm. Imagine um, your digestive issues going away. You know, imagine your withdrawal symptoms minimizing, you know, like the list can go on. Imagine all those things. Like how can you not show up to life different and better? Um, but for examples, I mean, I would say my website, superhumantransformation.com, not to make a shameless plug, but like I've got a bunch of the testimonials on there. Yeah. But I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen everything from dramatic weight loss to the reversal of diabetes, which, you know, some, some mainstream narrative folks would say it's impossible. To reverse, but I've seen, like, I got a guy, he's, tw- he started with me when he was 21 years old. I'm so proud of this dude. His name's Maurice. He wouldn't me- mind me mentioning his name. Mm-hmm. He came to me and he was 450 pounds. Mm-hmm. And now he's like around, hovering around 220 or something mm-hmm. like that. That's close to his Half ideal his body weight. weight. Wow. Half his body weight. And uh, he was insulin resistant and just, you know, had all kinds of different, I, I look at pictures of him. I just can't even believe it, you know, but there's, there's examples of that. Right. Um, but most body composition transformations aren't that dramatic, right? People are coming in, they're trying to do the right thing. They have some missing links, some uncertainty, 
Um, you know, but the, the real transformations come from what we talked about, which is like when you get this health piece figured out and you get on your path and journey, you maybe you don't see the possibility for it now. Everything in your life starts to open up and then everything becomes possible. A lot of people say, you know, well, Paula, of course you're happy because you're doing something you love. But I wasn't doing what I loved until I found health. And then I realized I wasn't happy where I was. Mm -hmm. So, so when you read like some of my testimonials, you know, a lot of them, you'll see some symptomatic transformations, body composition transformations, but a lot of it's also just like, I show up to life completely different now because I feel different and I'm happier just, just by, by nature of doing these things. I'm happier. I can't even explain why I'm happier, but I'm happier. And like we said, um, small things lead to huge results over time. You know, they, they may not seem to make a difference in the beginning, but um, your transformation is not something that's going to happen in the span of a three month coaching program with me. Right? Mm-hmm, right. That's the igniter for your transformation. That's mm-hmm. the catalyst for your transformation, but your transformation is just getting in this mindset of like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And then look at yourself, you know, three months down the road, three years down the road, 10 years down the road. It's like, you're going to be a completely different person. Is it? I love it. I love it. All right. Well, everybody in the comments is saying, this is awesome. Thank you so much. This is great. So much Uh hope. Um, So I appreciate, but that I want to say one thing about what you just said though, Um, Mm -hmm. just about transformation, about health. Like I think, especially like as it intersects with the withdrawal community, it's like we lost ourselves. We lost our health. We had, you know, through no fault of our own, really just that a genuine want to heal. And we went to the wrong people, you know? And so then it's not fair the way it happens, but like, it is an opportunity to get back the life that you deserve, that you want to live, that you, that you earned, you know, like through this, through the suffering. So just kind of like just the transformation, like part of it for us is time because our neurotransmitters just have to repair themselves. But Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I just, it's the human body really. It's the human body. Like it is capable of amazing things. If you give it what it needs. When you give it the right inputs, it is unbelievable what can happen. Yes. Anything is possible. Everything is possible. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. We're just so excited about the talk. It's just like, that's what we both do this for. I think like we watched the human body do what it was meant to do. Like we didn't, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. We didn't evolve over hundreds of thousands of years to be sick and to be eating Cheetos. Like we just didn't like, so it's just, it, it gives me hope even like, cause I don't feel the greatest, but I have noticed like just this couple changes with you for the last month, like yesterday or two days ago, I remember one of my sessions and I just felt like so energetic. And I was like, where's this coming from? I'm not even drinking coffee right now. Like what? And I was like, this is my health coming back, you know, like yeah, less, yeah. less bread and better sleep and waking up in the morning with the sunlight, like just a little bit of changes that I was doing this little tweaking. Like, and yeah. so that gives me like a lot of hope for the future. If I just keep doing what I'm doing, new stuff, adding, you know, slowly, 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 I'm going to hike with more vitality. I'm going to mm-hmm. be excited to see people. I'm going to show up for life even better than I already am. And that to me is like, that's the best I can ask for, you know? Well, once you get a taste of it, like you start to realize what's possible, right? It. And it's like, um, you, you can't, we can't guarantee how far down this path you're going to get. Like, I can't ever have someone come to me and I, I guarantee you're going to lose this much weight in this much time, right? we can't guarantee how fast things are going to happen. But what we can guarantee is that if you put these things into practice or the things that you decide are important or the one thing or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. What we can guarantee is that from where you are, you're going to get better and you're going to get better again and you're going to get better again. Right. And that's That's all you need to keep doing these things. Right. So the guarantee is that when you start to focus on these things, things are going to get better. They are guaranteed. Right. They are. Awesome. So inspiring. Um, uh, I'm, I'm super have a, thankful to be here with you. Uh, thank you. And so, yes, yeah, speaking of that, do you have any last words that you'd like to impart with our audience? And please definitely plug your website, your YouTube channel, whatever you have. Um, not really. I mean, I think we just had a really good said conversation everything. and like you're, yeah. you're worth it. It's worth, you know, like um, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, one thing just came to mind um, and this comes up a lot with clients, right? Is that you have to make yourself and your health a priority because a lot of us are used to giving and taking care of other people. And there's a lot of people that depend on you, right? Exactly. Because it, you know, if you don't take care of this now, like it's going to take care of itself at some point, you have to make yourself and your health 
a priority because then you're going to show up better to everything that you care about in your life, including the people that you take care of, including people that you love, including your job, including your passions and, mm -hmm. and whatever it is. Right. So I don't think there's anything more important than your own personal health. And, the, and then you're, you're better to serve, you know, whatever it is that you care about. That's it. Bang. I've gotten yep. that in little ways. I get those as, whisp as whispers mm -hmm. and you get it as a door knock and then it drops a house on your whole life. Boom. <laughs> so I'm yeah. like, I try to pay attention to the whisper, but anyway, um, thank you so much, Paul, for coming. And, yeah. Uh, I look forward to more talks with you whenever the mood arises. Um, keep up good work. Keep on. Oh, yeah. Watching we'll be in touch. I love it. You're not All getting right, away so, from me. Hey, no. and real quick. So, just, yeah. yeah, if you want to find me, Paul C. Tarina on Twitter. And, you know, I, I try to stay off of Facebook, but I'm on Twitter, Instagram. I'm not su super active right now. But um, my main website, if you'd like to schedule some time with me or just ask a question, superhumantransformation.com it may sound i don't know if that sounds kind of freaking sounds uh, awesome presumptive that's what, or something that's what like i'm that. here for heck yeah but, sign me but, up <laughs> yeah i just liked it because it gave us this logo the sht you know so yeah, um yeah that'd be the easiest way to connect with me and i'm an open book i'm living a life of service um you know I, I'll, I'll give you everything that i have and answer any question that you have that you have so that's awesome thank you paul thank you everybody yeah, for joining thank you for the us. opportunity yeah. And so next week we have Erin, who's going to talk about trauma informed yoga, her own healing journey from benzodiazepines and chemo brain. She's a breast cancer survivor mm -hmm. and a trauma informed yoga coach. Then we have a five week series series with the Alliance for the for benzodiazepine best practices. So we're going to interview the founder, the pharmacist, the doctor, the advocate and the public health servant and survivor person with lived experience. So please join us for the series of interviews. I'll be adding more later. If there's something that you want to hear about, or there's someone you want to hear from, please drop it in the comments and I'll take a good look at that person. Um, so thank you all for joining us. Share this video, watch it later, take notes. There's a lot of good stuff in there. I enjoyed it. And now I'm going to go eat eggs and bacon. And I hope you all have a good, <laughs> I hope you all have a good uh, weekend and see you later. Bye y'all. Bye.